and uh, then we can get going. So uh, before I go into the um, agenda of today and what we're actually going to talk about today, I want to briefly introduce um, SESTA here as well, because this uh, event is part of the SESTA training calendar and the training um, offers that SESTA has. So SESTA as the Consortium of European Social Science Data Archives is a, um, aims to provide a research infrastructure um, for social scientists in Europe. And uh, the goal is to enable the research community um, to conduct high quality research in the social sciences. And through that, to contribute to um, finding effective solutions to major challenges facing society today. By doing so, um, SESTA also focuses on facilitating teaching and learning in the social sciences. And today's event is part of this sort of teaching and learning um, aspect of SESTA. SESTA also offers a variety of tools, um, of tools and services, and we're going to focus on one today. So um, today we are going to be um, talking a bit about the uh, SESTA Data Management Expert Guide. And it is a guide written um, both by experts, but also aimed at experts to be, um, which is um, hopefully you. Um, and the agenda for today is I'm going to go give a brief introduction about um, what even are data management plans and um, why are they so important? So that we're all on the same page before we get uh, to anne Sophie's and Hannah's presentation about how to actually write data management plans. Then um, we will have about half the time left. So we're going to have about 30 minutes left for a Q&A session. So all the questions that might come up during the presentation or that you've um, had before uh, or are the reasons why you registered for this event, you can ask in the Q&A session. And um, I will try to answer them. And Sophie and Hannah will try to answer them. And maybe there's even um, other participants that will have uh, more expertise there and can jump in. Um, so we can do that sort of collaboratively. All right. Um, so now I've mentioned uh, data management plans or DMPs, the acronym there. Uh, quite a few times already. And you might be wondering what are DMPs actually? And the way I view it is that uh, data management plans are living documents. So they, um, they are not a document that you write once and then it is set in stone and then you will never touch it again. Um, but it is uh, something that is um, being adapted to your research process as well. That is um, ideally written in advance of a research project. And the content is that they structure and systematize your work with research data. And ideally, they also um, view and present re that research data along the research data life cycle that goes from planning how to work with research data over collecting and analyzing, and then ends with um, probably publishing and potentially reusing of research data. So there's this uh, structured um, and systematic look at research data. And ideally, data management plans will produce fair or fairer data. Um, so the outcome um, of a data management plan ideally is data that is um, findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable, always to the extent it is possible for your data. And why are these data management plans um, even important? So first of all, data management plans and good research data management go hand in hand. And Ideally, um, I would say that research data management is normatively important, but it also makes your life so much easier. And um, that's what I hinted at with the bullet point of indi the individual benefits. So 
you as a researcher um, will benefit from a good data management plan because it makes your life easier. You will have to think about how to work with data before your research project. And that allows you to be more efficient in working with data during the research, pro um, the research process. There's also some more external um, motivations to uh, writing and using data management plans. And those are obviously dictated by funders and funding agencies. So um, most national funding agencies, but also um, international funding agencies um, like the European Commission um, and Horizon Europe projects, for example, they do require data management plans fairly early on in the um, process. And it is something that um, Anne Sophie and Hannah will uh, pick up um, upon later. And the, the planning of your research process before you're doing it um, is sort of a good idea because it allows for easier project management. Um, you will also already know um, much better how much uh, or how many resources you will need um, for your research um, project. And it is also a really good way to um, show an increased accountability. So um, you could show that you as a researcher know that you are responsible for your data, that you're accountable for it. And then you can show ways of how to um, it, adhere to that. And that is um, obviously especially important in the, uh, in the social sciences as well, because um, the likelihood that uh, you work with um, personal and or sensitive data, um, which uh, sort of adds this layer of complexity to data processing uh, is there. So that was a um, very brief uh, tour de force through what are data management plans and why we need them. And then the uh, third option is obviously how to write a data management plan. And that is uh, obviously the, the most important question and also probably a daunting task because it's, um, it sounds very, very big and all encompassing. But in the end, what a data management plan does is it answers questions. And it answers questions about the provenance of data, about the storage of data, about the curation of data, about the access to data. And it covers that both during and after a research project. And in order to um, systematize this, the SESTA Data Management Expert Guide um, allows you or has is structured in different chapters. And each of the chapters has a list of DMP questions. So if you are tasked with writing a data management plan for your upcoming research project um, or for the upcoming uh, proposal writing uh, season, you can go through the list of DMP questions that I have linked here that will also go up on, um, and that document will also go up on Zenodo, um, so we'll have to link to it. Uh, there's a list of questions that if you answer them in your DMP, um, you can sort of structure your data management plan around these questions. And those are questions ranging from, um, do you collect data uh, or do you collect new data? Do you reuse data? Um, what type of data will you collect? Towards um, sort of from the, the provenance of the data stage uh, to the who has access to data during the research project. Um, sort of going more along the research data life cycle to the how to access data question. So there's a list of questions that you can answer in a text and that will practically make up your data management plan. So that was kind of a um, abstract way of thinking about how to write a data management plan. So now we'll give the floor to Anne, Sophie and Hannah for um, a more hands-on perspective on how to write a data management plan.
Yes, thank you, Hannah. Yeah, uh, yeah, nice. To, we are we are glad to to be here and to to share our experience uh, with you. And thanks for the the nice introduction, Lisa. Um. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, I've, uh, uh, Hannah and I have. Uh, well, we like to make a disclaimer, as uh, as we put in, and as it was called a keynote, and we are the experts. So I think we are on this uh, coming to this session. We're more um, someone that can share experiences and maybe have uh, an uh, idea or two that you can uh, uh, take back to uh, when you're working. Uh, with the data, uh, data management plan. So we uh, think of it as more of maybe sharing experiences. And also I think for the discussion later, I hope we can answer some questions indeed, but also I really encourage, as Lisa said, to, uh, to talk, let's, let's talk all of us. So uh, please uh, share, share also your experiences. Um, Yes, I think I would. I can. I can add to that. I'm from a, myself from a, a social science background, and uh, Hannah is 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 from the sciences, from geology. And uh, I think what have uh, struck us is how 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 very much we we uh, the challenges with in writing is uh, uh, it's is shared across across disciplines. Uh, all of course, some some something is unique, but indeed a lot of things are shared. Yes, I think that's uh, sort of, uh, and uh, Hannah, maybe if you want to share a bit more on, on yourself, please do. And otherwise, just uh, let, let's just dig in. Yeah, the the, the sharing of, of who I am is actually the start of um, of the presentation, because um, I, I felt a bit out of place because, yeah, I, I studied geology or geoscience, and um, I know that this is very different from, from the social sciences. Um, and I hope I can still come up with some examples that um, that are helpful for, for you, because um, I, I had so often the experience that when I talk to people about data management, I heard so often, oh, yeah, geology, you have figured it out, right? And actually, geology hasn't figured it out at all, at least parts of it. It is very heterogeneous. So, so I'm coming from a part um, which is called experimental petrology, which sounds very fancy. And it is pretty cool because you what, what you basically do is you create your own rocks in these machines that you can see here. Um, these machines create pressure and temperature, as you can find them deep in the earth. This is how it looks from the inside. It is a lot of like work with small parts and gluing things together and welding things together. Um, it was fun. That part was fun. Um, the part that was not so fun was this. I wanted to reuse data during my PhD. And this was the format I got it in. So in PDF files. So I couldn't copy it easily out and compare it with my own data that I measured. These are just rock composition. So it's oxides of elements that are in this rock. Um, and if you pay a little bit of attention, like apart from that, this is a PDF and this sucks to work with, um, the tables don't all have the same format. Like sometimes they have the oxides at the top, sometimes they have it on the side. Then the uh, the order of the elements is is not the same. Like from this one to this one, you can see that magnesium and manganese oxide are switched to the one below here. Uh, Chromium is at the bottom here, it's in the top. It's it's horrible to work with. I mean, you don't have to understand what you want to do with that data, but I'm, I'm sure you can look at it and see that this is a nightmare, um, which leads to why, like what are researchers doing? And this is, we spend most of our time, I know the, the font is a bit small, but we spend a lot of time on cleaning and organizing data. And in my case, it wasn't 60%. It was three months full-time typing data into Excel manually. This was so horrible that I quit my PhD um, and wanted to learn more about data management. So it was good because I got a job out of a horrible PhD and horrible data management. So that's cool. Um, and this is also, this is linked that exactly 
the same amount of people think that this is the most boring part of my research. Cleaning up data is boring. I don't want to do it. Since we don't want to do it, we should find ways to avoid having to spend so much time on it. And this is a, a bit of a repetition of what Lisa said in the beginning, but it is important. So I think I'm still going to repeat it because data management is, is really important in order to get your own research better. We, we had a conference uh, last week where one of the researchers that we invited to talk about their experiences with data management, he said that it makes collaboration with your past self a lot easier. So you understand also the data that you have published three months or three years ago a lot better if you are in control of your own data management. Um, you get hopefully more data citations if you publish your data separately and you have to reply to way fewer emails of people that read your paper, look at your data and absolutely do not understand what you were doing there or find that they are lacking some extra information on it. Um, and of course, it has been becoming more and more common that the funder is actually requiring you to write a data management plan and have an idea about general data management. For example, Horizon Europe requires two data management plans over the course of the project. The first one is an interim version in month six, usually, and the second one is at the end of the project. And in between month six and the end of the project, you, you're getting asked, are there any updates to your data management plan? Um, I'm plotting some like shameless advertisement for ourselves because we had an entire webinar on how to write a data management plan with very specific guidance uh, which you can find on our website um, and then the, this part that I put here in the bottom is it's a YouTube video on an experience on how horrible this con conversation can be if you want to get someone's data and they didn't have any uh, idea on data management and what they wanted to do in the future with when you just ask for a copy of data and you get the answer oh yeah I have it somewhere but I don't really know where it is and what I have named the columns in my in my file I don't know anymore and and I, I think everyone that works in research has at some point been in this situation that you just you, you try to understand someone else's data and they just themselves don't know at all anymore because they haven't used vocabularies, they haven't used useful names for columns. So that's, yeah, that's frustrating. And yeah, we want to avoid exactly that. Um, for like, if you're working in a Horizon Europe project, um, you can actually find an outline for the data management plan with given headlines. They are, you can work a little bit and so that you can make it your own. Uh, that's what uh, we did. I'm going to talk a little bit later about the project that I'm involved in. Um, but you have to describe your data. You have to talk about how are you planning on making your data fair. Um, you have to talk a little bit about other research outputs that are not your data, but maybe software that's connected to it. Um, or uh, and you have to talk about money what are you planning on spending on money on your data management now and after the project is over and you have to talk about data security and ethics and all these bullet points all these headlines are coming with guiding questions that are related like in this case for example they are related to the fair principles they just ask are you giving your data a persistent identifier with yes, which one is that? And, and so on. So that makes it easier. Um, and now we have two examples. Uh, Anna Sophie is starting with the shock data management plan that you have revised. And then I'm going to talk about a, a, a project that I'm writing the data management plan right now and have a deadline tomorrow to deliver that. So. It's, it's still work in progress, and I hope uh, that insight also helps a little bit. So uh, go ahead, Anna Sophie. You are muted. Yeah, thank you, Anna. Let's see. Oh, 
sorry, I did something wrong. Let me... Yes, um, I want to share with you. I was uh, involved in the in the shock project uh, as a as a data management consultant uh, in the late part of the project, and I um, I won't dig into details for the, on the shock project, but let let's say it's a, it was a project and actually still living a bit. It, it was a, a years cluster project that sort of uh, uh, worked to uh, share all kinds of uh, social science data tools and and services. So really a a challenge for uh, for data management. Um, of course, as any uh, years project, uh, the project started off uh, with the delivering a data management plan, and in this I wasn't uh, involved. So, uh, so uh, on this, that's that was sort of the the, the start. Um, uh, what what was in this? I call it yeah the OG data management plan. Very classic uh, data data management plan. Um, as explaining the purpose of the data collection in the in relation to the the project. Uh, types and formats of the project data, reuse of existing data within the project, origin of the data and data usefulness, align with, with the fair principles, uh, reuses needed and responsibilities within the project. And additionally, actually, I also have these, uh, these sections on uh, data security and, and it's, uh, ethical and intellectual property aspects related to the data. Uh, you'll see that uh, that yeah the, again the data management plan always talk about yeah yeah about data sometimes it's talking about data and metadata data sets uh, but within this the the shop project the idea was very much to that uh, that that the data management plan also concerned ideally with with both survey data case studies pilot data tools and service data shop marketplace data. And shut user community data. So we're all all sorts of data, you could say. Uh, and maybe I mentioned this at once. Uh, 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 often uh, talking about data, we'll say that we'll like to, to broaden the concept and talk about uh, 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 research outputs or research dig digital objects. Or sort of in order to actually, for instance, uh, include uh, tools and services within, uh, uh, within uh, also to to be handled by the data management plan. But here I will say that the the focus was on on the data. So uh, that's the challenge we haven't followed how to uh, sort of cater for uh, for all kinds of uh, 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 digital research objects. Um, yes, I think uh, to change uh, slides, uh, Hannah will be. Yes, and then uh, the 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 project started working uh, alongside this uh, data management plan, and then uh, reaching I think uh, when it was one year uh, back in the project, uh, uh, this was the time to have an an update of the shop data management plan and. Um, and as, uh, as also Lisa put in the beginning, and, and Hannah mentioned as well, a uh, data management plan is seen as a as a living document. And so I uh, was employed to uh, to 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 update this uh, data management plan, and I, I was like, okay, so so actually, how how am I gonna uh, do this 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 update? What's uh, how how will I show that the, the data management plan is a living document and not something we just uh, the project just left aside uh, after month uh, six or whenever it was. The, the... Uh, so I thought, yeah. So what should be uh, the ambition for for the update? Uh, and I uh, have uh, stated this uh, here. So it was again to outline that that this was to be guidelines for data management in the project. Uh, it was to show best best practices and ambitions for, uh, for data management. And indeed, of course, with a special eye on that this was the last uh, stages of the project. And uh, 
you can say here the data management plan should be a living document even uh, after the project have, have, um, have run out. Uh, the, the, the update should also uh, uh, sort of document or make an argument for, for the continuous updates of the show. Uh, a data management plan, and again, this is about being a, a living document. Um, and then, sort of, what what could uh, what could I work with for this uh, this update? I have let let me let me put in that the the shock data management plan originally delivered was a very uh, very ambitious document, and with lots of details, and and I think in very much in. In, in perfect uh, line with with what's uh, uh, what's uh, needed from a data management plan. So nothing sort of no no critique. This was a state of the art document indeed. So that was the thing I had to to update. So I, I put down what could be the sort of the building block. What should be the building blocks for making an update? And uh, I came up. These was sort of the the, the building blocks. I I. Uh, we we worked upon uh, to make a list of all I can see that's spelled in Danish uh, all data sets and and data usage within the project to make an a, a, an overview of all data sets uh, in the in the perspective of the the fair principles uh, to point to solution for so sustainability and long term preservation um, uh, for all the metadata and data in the short project. This was again that I focused on metadata and data and, and not uh, research digital object as such. And uh, also sort of uh, an intention to keep this data management plan uh, alive. Um, and how to, uh, how I, um, I would uh, sort of uh, document this in in the report or the and and I ended up coming up with this we ended up with this uh, sort of title for for the updated version of the shark DMP as we wouldn't call it shark DMP uh, version 2 so we called it an overall strategy for shark uh, data management uh, and this was sort of the questions uh, that that uh, we hoped it was answered by the this updated version was how data management planning what had supported the, the SHOP project, how it offers transparency to the SHOP uh, project compliance with the FAIR principles, and uh, how the project supports preservation and sustainability uh, of, for this yeah, data set and data usage uh, during and after uh, the SHOP project. So this was sort of the, 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 the guiding, uh, the guidelines for, for the, the update. Yeah, Hannah, please, uh, Jane. Next slide, please. And this was uh, um, uh, how how uh, I uh, we decided to work with this uh, in, uh, sort of can say update of the the short BMP or, or in a way to to improve the value of the the original uh, short uh, DMP. So 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 one of the the things uh, hopefully done by the the update is. That we uh, sort of um, changed from, from you can say in in an, in in the original DMP there was a lot of uh, of course uh, I call it data specificity here uh, to uh, to to sort of uh, from 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 um, looking at, at each data set as as as, as one thing to uh, to have a, an overview of all the shock uh, data. And very sort of, you can say very, uh, uh, not not very original. I made a we made a list of all the data set in an Excel spreadsheet in order to uh, to give this uh, overview. Uh, yeah, and again, the, the next one is a bit of the same. Uh, we used uh, this uh, sort of list of all data set uh, in order again to change from 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 one specific description of each data set to an overall description and that um uh, I, we put that into actually the, the this spreadsheet and list of uh, data set and let me share with you here that uh, actually my my ambition was that we could take all the fair principles and indeed you know sort of uh, uh, the 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 extra like um, uh, for for findability will be 
uh, that metadata is assigned a global, globally unique uh, identifier. They are described with rich metadata. Um, they are registered or indexed in a searchable resource. All these, I, I don't know, you might know them where, where we sort of uh, detail on the on the if, on the findability, more details on accessibility and, and so forth. And actually, I, I will share with the end, but in the end, I, I didn't come through with all these kind of details, but that was the, the idea in order to really give a sort of dig into the FAIR principle and, and, and show how they were, uh, there was a compliance. Um, then also for, for this update, uh, obvious choice, focus even more on sustainability and, and long-term uh, preservation uh, of the metadata and, and data. And, uh, and uh, again, actually put in this, uh, this again, this is very, very strong, down to it, uh, a spreadsheet, uh, provide what's the solution for sustainability? How is the data preserved? Um, and uh, and then again, keeping the shock uh, data management plan alive. Uh, yeah, the, this was just to plan how to to update this CMP, and this was how to keep it alive. Alive uh, on the ethics and GDPR. Again, uh, we I say we we the idea was to go from this unique approach for each data set to a shared approach. And there again, I will need to share with you that. We ended up taking this out and doing the GDPR bits, you can say, and ethics bits on their own. Uh, so they didn't become part of the plan, and 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 uh, I think that they are all all the sort of uh, data providers just were left with the, each uh, unique uh, way of doing thing, and and they had to to uh, we made a document so we made them sign that they were do, doing things properly. And this again was the disclaimer I made earlier that we focused only on data and metadata, uh, and uh, and and we didn't take in, uh, for instance, uh, tools and services or a code or, or any kind, any other kinds of uh, res uh, digital research uh, objects. So this was sort of the the again the approach to make uh, to make the update. I think yeah. And uh, to to uh, to get back to sort of the the experience for for working with this uh, update of the shock DMP, and again showing that it actually makes makes sense to talk about the data management plan as a living uh, uh, document, was that we took this uh, uh, we took the fair principles uh, to the front of uh, of the DMP uh, uh, follow up, and I think again this uh, really also counts for the. And that later on, the, the sustainability of the, the DMP to really focus on the FAIR principles uh, uh, as, as such. Um, yeah, yeah, and again, coming back to that, yeah, we took the scoping of the re yeah, research data objects. Uh, we, we only took focused on the, the, the data and the, the metadata, which indeed it took 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 down the complexity for for the project, and again I yeah this is repeating myself I I, I we use this from moving from a data set specificity and to to sort of an an overview which I think it's a, a very valuable uh, when when we look sort of uh, after you can say after the project ends. Yeah, and and ideally, I think the ethics and the GDPR dimensions were were, were kept in 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 the update of the data management plan. But here, actually, we decided as it, it became too complex to handle to take them out and do them uh, in another way. Uh, yeah, and uh, focused on on the sustainability and preservation dimensions. Um, focus on how could again, uh, how how could uh, re how could this support the reuse of, uh, of data. And here, the, this was the re digital research objects. Uh, focus also on, on publication. And again, I think I did, we didn't quite succeed again there, uh, but I, I, ideally we would have uh, to add to these, uh, this overview uh, publication where the data was used. And again, reproducibility of the data, uh, again, showing how the data was, uh, was used. And uh, of course, if we can, if, uh, the reusability if the data are sustained. Now I think I'm getting I'm getting to the end here. 
uh, uh, again, uh, uh, connected also to uh, uh, what we uh, very much was uh, recommended, of course, in 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 also in in the shop project where there was data and metadata. I mean, use uh, one of the the the, ses the sister service providers to uh, to uh, to uh, to store to to preserve your data and and by by doing that. A lot of the answers to uh, to uh, how you would comply with the fair principles would actually come from the repository choice uh, you had you had made, so that we had uh, also put in that uh, I mentioned uh, many times. So I think that was it for the for the for the struck uh, DMP experiences. And again, it wasn't. This is uh, maybe not the expert view, but rather uh, what the experience view. Over to you, Hannah. Yes, and uh, we're shifting gears a little bit, and I'm trying to hurry up because I can see we're over time already. Um, so, so I mean, I, I <laughs> I'm uh, working in a project. It's a it's a fairly big project with a lot of different partners and a lot of different uh, interest groups and that. Um, it's a Horizon Europe funded project. Uh, and we are about half a year in, so it's time to deliver the first data management plan. Um, I would like to describe a little bit the, the project um, that, that you understand why it's complicated while trying to keep it very simple because the, the science behind it is extremely complicated and I don't understand it. Um, I got brought into this project because my, my previous boss thought oh, you're a geologist, you know everything about geology. And while I'm just the person that stuffs powder into a capsule and like warms that up a little bit, this is like outdoor geology and I don't like that. On top of that, it's physics and I was never good in that. Um, this project is about fiber cable. Fiber cables on ocean floors that usually transport internet signals, but some really smart people have figured out if you put some sensors on these cables, you can measure a bunch of really interesting things. Everything that moves in the ocean can be measured and detected by this. This is extremely interesting for everything that has to do with earthquakes, tsunamis, so fairly classical geology stuff. But apart from that it, you can also measure large mammals moving around so you can track whale movements and make early warning systems for for ships so that ships and whales don't collide that's that's really cool i think um the, the only issue is that if you look at the data management side of things it's complicated because for one thing we have this distributed network of different NRANs that have to talk to each other, different uh, countries that have to agree on a national security strategy, because as you know, there's not only big mammals swimming around in the ocean, but maybe also some foreign submarines or our own submarines that we might not want to have out in the open for everyone to access where these submarines are in real time. So this project needs a really good filtering algorithm for getting all of this sensitive data out, while at the same time trying to push it out to very different uh, research communities that would preferably have real-time access to the data while we can't give them all of it at once. Um, and I'm sitting in the middle of this uh, while trying to structure the data management plan. I need to take input from um, the the national data collection sites. Wait, yeah, yeah, we start this way around. We start on the right side here. Um, I need to take input from from the from the national sites that collect data. I I need to know what are their issues, like what what technical issues are we running into, um, in order to give fast real time data that follows as much as possible the fair principles. Uh, and I need to take input from the research communities. How do they want to have their data? How is everything else? How does their data look? In what formats is that? What metadata standards are you are you following? Um, so we need, as I said, we need these new data scrubbing workflows in order to, to yeah, scrub really large amounts of data. We're talking about terabytes per day. 
that need to be in the beginning stored so we can develop algorithms on that. Um, we, we need policies for data storage, especially in the beginning. In the end, we are not going to end up with that much data, but in the beginning, we need these training data sets. Uh, we need to talk to the national security agencies. We Yeah, everything I said before, we, we need to satisfy a number of different research communities while ensuring fast, open, and fair data. Um, we need to decide what data we should be keeping and for how long. Um, and then apart from all this like complicated, very specific stuff, we have the the community to need to agree on where are we publishing the data? What, what are places that our researchers are using and what standards are already being used in terms of data format, metadata templates and vocabulary. So the, the standard things that you always have to think about. And this project is really because it's so big uh, we're actually allowed to write 15 pages in our data management plan. And first I thought, oh yeah, that's a lot, that's fine. Now we're sitting there and we're having all these different angles and all these different experts that want to get their opinion into this, that 15 pages is not a lot. So sometimes it's easier to have a smaller project. And that's um, that's it, that, that was it. And we're only 50% over time or something like that. So. Uh... Sorry about that. No worries at all. Um, <laughs> thank you for that uh, very diverse input from different um, disciplines and also different stages um, of the living document that a DMP often is. Um, so it's very interesting to see those different approaches there.